and we're back on the roof so we're back at this apartment we guess what we got another ch38 so here's how you fix a ch38 which is a shortage of refrigerant on an lg mini split so here we go hooked up to this uh, we have 106 psi on both sides so that's saturating at 34 degrees it's currently 72 degrees out here so it's definitely low so we're going to go ahead and get uh, our recovery going and then while that's happening we'll get the uh, indoor head unit ready to roll all right so we're inside so i think this is the first time i've been able to show you the stupidity i'm dealing with so we have these press fittings um it needs to be a perfect circle um, the pipe in order for this to seal properly, which it's not because it's soft drawn copper. Uh, also, you need to deburr it, which they're not deburred. They probably even didn't, um, you know, sand it like you're supposed to. And they put them all behind the wall. This one's actually not so bad. Usually the pipe is in the wall, so I have to cut this open to get in there. And then I cut this out and I brazen a whole new piece, reflare. Um, Usually there's one on the 5 8 line and the 3 8 In this case, it's only on the 5 8 so that's a little bit less work for me, so that's pretty awesome. But yeah, this whole building's like this. This is probably number 14 that I've done. Um, this one, the last one I did was actually really hard because it was like really in the wall. But yeah, because you have to try not to, because I braze in a new piece, I just run nitro. Um, but uh, yeah, these things are terrible. Some of them had them up on the roof, which were really easy to get to, but I think I've already replaced all of those. But every single one, when it has a leak, it's on this stupid fitting. So I'll never use these ever. They're terrible. And if you're gonna use them, at least put them where they're easy to you know, get to. So this one's not so bad. The last one I did, I actually had to take the whole unit off the wall. This one I think I can leave in place. The nice thing about these LGs is they have this little clip thing and it clips here to hold everything out of the way, but you can also use it to, as a stand to keep it off the wall. So that's pretty cool. We're gonna go ahead and get back on the roof and get started. All right, got the recovery all done. Uh, we pulled out like one pound, like a little less, almost a pound. I think it was like 12 ounces. Um, got our nitrogen set up. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and um, go down and cut the suction pipe off and then uh, raise on a new piece and reflare it and reconnect it. So hopefully this goes well. Um, I've had some great luck with the flares. So far the flares haven't been leaking. Uh, we'll double check that. You know, once we're done, we'll pressure test it and all that. But onto the indoor head. So this is what I got to go through. I got to try to cut this off with very little space. <clears throat> I'm using this to push it out so yeah so we'll get this cut off all right we got her cut off now we need to deburr it and we're gonna swedge it all right we got her swedged not bad not bad and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make another piece with an elbow and then we'll flare it on there so we got our piece made so basically that's gonna go in there like that and then we'll flare this and put it on there like that and then we'll braise this part on so we'll cover that with some protective stuff so we don't catch anything on fire and then I have a extinguisher just in case, because there is a lot of oil in here because it was running with low charge. So we got our flare made. Um, don't forget to put the nut on when you do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly screw that on. And then this will basically just kind of hold things in place and then we'll braise that up. So I'm gonna get all set up to braise. We're gonna put some nylon on here. I'm not gonna torque it to spec until it's all brazed up. So I got a wet rag shoved back there uh, to keep things cool so we don't melt the insulation. And then we got this fire uh, protector cloth. And then this weight, I'm using my, uh, what do you call it? Uh, my flaring tool as a weight to push this, so it pushes this out. So it's to hold it down so I don't have to touch it. So we're gonna go ahead and get this brazed. We already got nitrogen going, so let's braze it.
That was the easiest one. Usually I got to do this inside the wall. All right, we're doing 55 foot pounds for this 5 8 line here. We're going to go on the roof, pressurize this with nitro, and then um, make sure that none of this is leaking. And if it isn't, we'll go ahead and insulate, put this back on the wall, uh, clean the filter because I'm sure it's trash and then uh, finish everything up on the roof. So we're just uh, putting some nitro in there, trying to get her all pressurized. So yeah, just make sure there's no other leaks, but uh, usually there aren't. It's always a stupid uh, shark bite. Anyway, we're gonna pressurize that. While that's holding pressure, we'll put new insulation on the line, clean that all up and get it all put back together. All right, so there were no leaks on my flares and we got this all re-insulated. So we're gonna go ahead and put this back on the wall. We're gonna clean the pump, clean the filter. In fact, let's see if this filter is nasty. Uh, this one's not terrible. We'll clean it anyway. I'm gonna hose it off outside. But yeah, the pump is definitely nasty. I'm just wanting to show you these. Uh, so for these Gobi 2s, um, they do need to be serviced. Uh, the little strainer gets plugged and then the sensor gets gunk on it. So then it starts thinking there's water when there isn't. And so then it starts pumping air and making that loud gurgly noise. And usually you can tell it's dirty when the reservoir is dirty like this. All right, so we got her pressurized. She's at 356.4 and 355.3. So we'll be back in about, uh, I don't know, however long it takes to put the indoor unit back together. We're at 356.3, 355.1. I think that's where it was. Uh, I didn't see any leaks at the flares. There's nothing out here, so we should be good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and get our vacuum going. So we're gonna dump this nitro and get the vacuum going. So we're gonna go to lunch while it's doing this and then uh, we'll go from there. But yeah, we're already at 700 microns, so yeah. And it's really pulling a bunch of stuff out. We have the uh, gas ballast open. Usually I let it go until it's under a thousand, but uh, yeah, we're at 700, we'll go ahead and close her up. And we'll be back after lunch. All right, so we're back. Uh, we're at 347 microns, so I'd say it's good. So we're gonna start prepping uh, to charge our refrigerant, you know, bleeding our hoses and whatnot. Um, this takes 4.85 pounds or 77.6 ounces. All right, we're charging four and a half pounds of R410A into our system here. Uh, we're going in through the liquid line. All right, we're almost there. We're at 3.6, 3.8, one more pound to go. Hopefully we got enough. Yeah, we should be good. Perfect. Sweet. Let's go ahead and restore power and we'll get some Schrader cores in here and yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and put some new Schrader cores on these guys. So this is very important. You wanna go ahead and screw this on, but not all the way. We're gonna go ahead and let it leak out. That way we don't get no air in there. Okay, so we purged all the air out and we pop that in there and screw her in. Just like that. That's very important you don't get air in these things. Don't want air. Okay, and then we're good. So now we can go ahead and remove this one. All right, same thing with this one. We're gonna go ahead and pop this on here and we're gonna screw it in about Maybe halfway. All right. There we go. And screw it in. Okay. Cool. And we are good to go. throw our caps back on here and we have factory charged this um, the line set is within minimum so I don't need to add or remove any additional charge so we'll go ahead and crank these down all right moment of truce set to cooling 64 So we have finished repairing the leak. We now have 47 degrees coming out of this. All right, so she's back up and running. We are good to go. So if you ever get a CH38 on an LG mini split, that means it's a shortage of refrigerants. That means you got a leak somewhere. In this case, 
we have those stupid sharp bikes um but uh, usually they're going to be leaking on those flares either the one at the head or the ones out here uh unless somebody put like a screw or a nail through the line set but yeah for the most part usually that's the case so anyway hopefully this helps you out if you come across a lg system with an l with a uh, ch38 so thanks for watching make sure you like and subscribe comment tell me what a horrible technician i am hit that bell notification and follow me on instagram and facebook and if you want to support the channel pick up some work socks or get some tools from my tool store thanks for watching